Hey everyone, Techni here with another recently released Steel Series product. If any of you has caught our review of the Rival 3 Gaming Mouse, the recently released one right there at 30 bucks, I mean, have we practically struck gold with this that mouse, right? Absolute steel at 30 bucks. And that's what we have today is the new Steel Series membrane gaming keyboard, the Rival 3, Apex 3. I should start scripting my videos. Never gonna happen. But anyways, the Apex 3 right here comes in at only 50 bucks. And that's what we're gonna find out, just like with the Rival 3. Is this worth 50 bucks? So first off, inside your box right here, you're gonna get your keyboard, and then you get the wrist rest. This wrist rest is pretty much the exact same one that came with the Apex 7 and all those higher end keyboards right there. It's not a soft touch, but it does have a soft coating on it. It's not smooshy like what you'd see in like a Razer keyboard or anything like that, but it's really soft, just very smooth. It's like this rubber coating, and it feels fantastic. It also just simply magnetizes to the keyboard right here, and there's rubber feet on the wrist rest as well, so it doesn't budge on you. Now, before we go any further, further in this review right here. I know what a lot of you are thinking, meh, a membrane keyboard, who wants that? We want mechanical, you know what I mean? And yes, we all love mechanical keyboards. Heck, that's pretty much all I use on my desk these days. But I absolutely love a membrane keyboard. We reviewed so many and I honestly love them. They're fantastic. And they're for some people, as far as the sound, which we'll get into later and everything, right? The price, the price is right on membrane keyboards. They're fantastic boards. They don't make your game any worse than a mechanical keyboard, you know what I mean? Again, they're fantastic, so let's just squash the membrane hate. All right, so let's jump right into the build of the Apex 3 right here. Now, the entire keyboard is plastic. Actually, it's really not. When you come over here to this volume, your media wheel, I'm jumping ahead of myself here, but anyways, this wheel is metal. I was kind of unsure by myself, so I had to kind of give it the old tooth test, you know what I mean? And lo and behold, it is metal. So it really threw me off. Again, the entire keyboard is plastic, wrist rests and everything, and then this wheel right here is metal. I don't know if they just had a whole bunch left over from the other boards, just really threw me off. So now as far as the board being pretty much completely plastic, when you get it up here and you start twisting it up and everything, yeah, you can flex it, but I mean, honestly, are any of us gonna be doing this with our keyboard? No. Whenever you lay it flat and press it down, you get a little bit of a bounce right there. I'm talking an absolute smidge, it doesn't flex though, and the really cool thing about that, talking about how it doesn't flex, as we notice with a lot of keyboards, right, you usually have your four feet going around here, on this one, by the way, you have three nice chunky rubber feet here, and then your fold out feet, whenever they're laying flat right here, they are both rubberized on the bottom there, but the really cool thing, if you look closely right here where I got the wire coming through, you have this little nub right sticking out right there, and that's really cool because it prevents that little middle flex right there, that is awesome, I've only seen that on a few keyboards, I think every company needs to start doing that, again, just to kind of leave that mid flex there. The other cool thing that you might have just noticed right there with the cable, now the cable is attached to the keyboard right here, you can't remove it, but it's super cool how you have that router right here, you can bring it all the way to the right, bam out in the middle like we have here, or then bring it to the left. That is incredibly awesome on a membrane keyboard. All right, so now getting into using the keyboard right here, again, talking membrane, and like I stated before in the beginning, incredibly quiet, and that's why I love membrane keyboards. Let me give you this sound test real quick and let you listen to it. All right, so after listening to it right there, what did you think? Again, I absolutely love the sound of it. Even on my mechanical boards, my primary switch right now, and I absolutely love them, is Cherry MX Silence. And honestly, they pretty much sound exactly like this. I absolutely love it. But of course, switch sound and switch feel is definitely a personal preference thing. Again, me talking about loving Cherry MX Silence. I know a lot of people won't. A very fan favorite is the clicky blue switches, right? I know a lot of people love those. Me personally, I absolutely cannot stand him. Number one, my son's room's right across the way right there, you know, so it'll keep him up at night. So if you got kids or family around, your friends, whatnot, you know what I mean? A nice membrane board, just very quiet. Talking about feel when using the uh, this keyboard right here, to me, they feel like browns. Again, they're silent, but when you press it down, 
you get a little tactile bump right there whenever it presses down. And what that's doing is hitting a little, uh, the little uh, rubber dome down in the bottom to make the keys actuate like in any other membrane keyboard, you know what I mean? But that's what they feel like is a brown switch. All right, so now the keycaps on this keyboard, again, it's membrane, so no, you can't change out your keycaps or anything like that. As you can see, you got the little dome or the little square thing that goes down and presses onto the membrane uh, board right there. Now these keycaps, again, they are sprayed, so they will get shiny, your legends will fade, way on down the road. It's not gonna happen like your first month. I'm talking like probably a year or two, you know what? I guess depending on how much you use it, you know what I mean? But the keycaps, again, being that basic, I don't know, plastic or whatever, they are very flimsy. I mean, you can press them in on the sides right there and they do bend. Of course, whatever you're typing on a regular, no, they don't. But again, when you take them off and just kind of squeeze them, they do feel quite chintzy. And talking about chintzy, this leads me into the one thing I absolutely cannot stand with this board right here. And that is as far as them implementing like that floating key design. And I know why they did it. As far as a membrane keyboard right here, they just wanted to bring out that RGB. As you guys are looking at it right now from the camera, it might look pretty good. You see the RGB just flown on the bottom right there all around the entire keyboard. When I hold like this, the RGB looks fantastic. And I'm not sure how well you guys can see it right there like that, you know? But it just looks, let me go right here because you can adjust all your RGB right on the board as far as profiles, the brightness and all that stuff. But maybe now you can see it. You see it right there and you have that floating key design. All you see is all that plastic underneath there. And again, even with the RGB on, when I crank it up, it just looks incredibly cheap. Like I wish they would not have implemented that floating key design. I can't stand it. It looks so cheap and incredibly ugly. All right, so other than that right there, we're gonna swing over again to that media wheel we have right there, which you have this button right underneath it, which will uh, skip your tracks, pause your tracks and everything. And then you have your volume wheel right over here. Really nice, very easy to use. And I love how they have those features on it. And then of course you have your num lock, your cap lock, little light right up top there. Very functional and easy to use. And I love the features on it. Again, having your profiles on it, being able to adjust the brightness on it, very simple to use. Now, the other cool thing here, on top of being able to control everything on the keyboard as far as your RGB and everything, you can actually take advantage of the SteelSeries software here. We're going to select our Apex 3, and then as you can see, you can get all of your macros and everything, set it to whatever you like right there. But the cool thing is the illumination. As you can see, you have all these different zones to pick, and you can select each different zone. I mean, you don't have many effects, as you can see right here, but you can make each different zone do a different thing, or go on over here and and, uh, select the entire board and then make it a solid color or a solid effect right there as far again as far as the uh, Customization of the board right here really cool and easy to use on the software and again You can save it right onto your uh, keyboard right there. All right So all in all the apex 3 right here by the way I'm not sure if I mentioned it as you can see on the box right here You can use it on PC Mac Xbox one and PS4 So if you're interested in using on console you can as well But all in all my thoughts of the apex 3 right here I was excited for this. Again, like I stated before, I truly, honestly love membrane keyboards. There's great ones out there, a whole bunch of great ones. But the Apex 3 is just, I don't like it. I see where they were trying to go with it. Again, copying the Apex Pros and 7s and stuff like that, which is an absolutely gorgeous design. It really is. But I think this is just, I honestly don't think it's worth that 50 bucks as far as it just feeling a little chintzy right there. But the number one thing, I can't stand the look of it. I really do not like this floating key design on this memory keyboard. And you see all that chunky plastic underneath there, even with the RGB on, it, it just looks incredibly cheap to me. And what I think they should have done or what I'm gonna recommend is still the SteelSeries Apex 150 right here. Very solid frame. The keys go right down in it. It holds the RGB in there. I mean, let me tell you what, you could not flex this board one bit. Still one of my hands down favorite membrane boards right here. Absolutely love this one and I still recommend it to this day. So I think they should have kept this design, gone and thrown that wheel right up here in that media thing. Absolute complete win, you know what I mean? So yes, I do see where they were trying to go with this, kind of implement that you know higher end design into this cheap board, but that's all they did was make it cheap. So unfortunately, no, I don't recommend it. I really don't. And trust me, I was excited for this one because again, you all know I love the Apex 7. It was one of my favorite mechanical boards and seeing that implemented into a membrane, I was incredibly excited. But nah, I call this one a complete pass. But hey, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. I hope I was able to help you out and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for some future tech videos. Hey, I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.